the Kickoff Breakfast Show. Welcome back to the Kickoff Sports Breakfast Show on Beach FM on your Saturday morning. And we are celebrating 25 seasons of the Hurricanes. And this week we are talking to the Lucys. It is a great honour of mine to welcome into the show. He debuted in 2004 to 2008. And that was only the start of his career. He is 113. He is Thomas the Tank Waldrum. G'day, Thomas. G'day, Damien. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. How are you doing, my friend? Oh, you know, getting there. It's been an interesting time, but uh, hopefully everything will start going back to normal very shortly. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Now, um, we go way back. I've uh, been saying all through the show that you are my best mate, so I'm not a liar, oh, hopefully. I've seen your career right from back uh, from when you ran over me at uh, under juniors at, at Wainui. But, you know, you, you did start with uh, the development in Wellington when it started in your early days. Can you tell us about those early days of de- development and the professional era of rugby in Wellington? Uh, yeah, it was just... I think that's the thing, like, school rugby was always a great feeling and playing first 15 and stuff like that. And then once you sort of get that feeling and if you're, if you're half decent, you get to go to the academy and um, and that's where you sort of pick up all the sort of trades and stuff you need to become professional. And we're lucky enough to win and we have some great mentors in Tana and uh, David Holwell, uh, Jason Spice and stuff. Like, guys like that were always willing to help. Uh, Christian Cullen, all those guys were willing to help the young guys, which was probably made their transition a lot easier. So, and then um, and then to have the guys around you as well, having Pity, Namir, Ma, all those guys sort of coming up together um, during New Zealand, uh, Wellington school. So, and then to progress to the Hurricanes is always sort of special when you've got a, a group of youths that have sort of been together for a long time. Absolutely. Hey, mate, I know you did collect the cards back in the day because I was with you. And then you went on to debut for the Lions at, at just 18 in 2001, and you had some pretty awesome names uh, lining up next to you, like some of those names, Tana, Cully, Jonah. I mean, what was that first year going in um, as a professional athlete at such a young age with those names as your teammates? Yeah, it was, it was, it was um, like going from New Zealand 21s, and then you sort of go from New Zealand 21s, and then they sort of say, okay, you might, your goal, your next goal is to make the you know, in the Cup, well, why the 10 Cup? Um, there's so many names of those things now, anyway. Um, it's still the NPC to me, mate. Yeah, NPC, yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's good old days. Um, yeah, so then, the sort of then, just, just to try to get many game times or even just training with them and stuff. And it was always nice with Philo because uh, he, he would admit it, he was, a, he was a lazy trainer and I got to do all the training. So um, you always sort of always feel part of it. And then, yeah, when you first get your first game and play with those, those guys and, and they because because you're in their team they want to look after you and they protect you which is which is awesome first year you got named in the hurricanes for the first time in 2004 you were only 20 years old um that 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 uh, tell us about that experience taking that step from mpc to super rugby yeah well, that's the thing it's it's a stepping stone and if you perform well in um the mpc that that's an opportunity to play super rugby and Back then, it was always about the getting drafted and stuff like that. You just didn't really know until one of the coaches rang you and said, "Okay, you're in the Hurricanes." Or like Scott, then uh, he said, "Oh, yeah, you've made Super Rugby, but you've been drafted to the Crusaders." And it used to be uh, like a really exciting time, and it's, it might have changed now. But I remember just sitting there next to your phone, or ringing all the other mates. Have you made it? He's like, "Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm in, I'm in." So you must you must know that the coaches are ringing and stuff like that. So. To get that phone call from Colin Cooper to say, yeah, um, uh, well done, you've made Super Rugby. But that, that's only the beginning. So then it's all about going there, proving yourself and, and trying to get as much game time as possible. But I was, I was fortunate enough to have some like top guys in front of me, like uh, Rodney, Jerry, uh, Chris and stuff. You know, they, they were all backs and stuff as well, which was always hard. But it was always nice to know that you were the next cab off the ranks sort of thing. Yeah, you did uh, have a battler of a career with with the Canes, with those three names that you've named. How how did you keep that motivation earlier on um, with not getting the game time, or was it really a, a learning experience setting yourself up for the rest of your career? Yeah, I think I've, when we first sort of made Super Rugby, they sort of sat us down and um, sort of said, you know, this this is this is only the last three years. I think that's all the information they had at the time, and um, they gave us a presentation and. The first year, from um, I don't, I'm not 100 percent sure, but they say 
um, this is the whole team. And then the following year, there's probably about four or five black dots over people's faces. Then another year, there was more dots. And then by the end of the third year, I think there's only like five or six guys. So they sort of sort of trumped it into you. If, if, if you don't look after yourself and you don't perform, you're going to get cut straight away. And that was a big motivation not to be one of those black dots, really. Yeah. And then you sort of just keep going and going until you until you're not. <laughs> exactly. Hey, you did have a couple chances, and and you even get to, got to line up against your brother Scooter um, in the in the Canes jersey a couple times. One try that comes to to mind was pretty pretty stellar, where you made a break, popped it up to Scooter, where he dived under the uh, under the post that uh, was also parodied on uh, Crowd Goes Wild. So, how was it? Uh, uh, playing at that level for two kids that are growing up in the Wellington region, playing alongside your brother? Yeah, it was always special. And we played a lot of club rugby together and then and then by the uh, NPC. And then to play at the sort of like the top level of provincial rugby, um, you know, it was always special. So you know your your brother's has got as much talent as you and stuff like that. So it's always, always special. And we always sort of had a good time and we always sort of found each other like I don't, I don't think it was on purpose, but somehow we just probably played, found each other because we were playing so much one-on-one rugby when we were growing up, and just trying to rip each other's heads off and <laughs> just play, play in the mud and um, and just play rugby and, and just enjoy it. And then to play on the biggest stage in front of the pack at Westpac Stadium is, is always special with your brother. Absolutely. Hey, what were some of your um, fondest memories of the time in the Hurricanes jersey? Um, being so, my Hurricanes number is like one one three, and Pity is one one four. So I say, I always say, oh, I'm, I was better than Pity, but not really, <laughs> just because my number. Always, always, always have a mind about that. But no, I think, um, yeah, probably scoring the winning try against the Brumbies yes. at, at the stadium. To, they were, I think that might have been the first try. Um, but I just enjoyed, and you enjoyed Friday, like Friday night, one the stadium, thirty thirty thousand people. Um, Having family watching and stuff is, is, was always always a special time, mate. It did uh, it did set you up for the rest of your career. You did uh, make the hard call to leave Wellington and go down to the Crusaders, where you had an absolute standout season with them, playing becoming the first non All Black to win Player of the Year. How hard was it to leave the the place you'd grown up? Yeah, tough. But I think that's the thing. I was I was lucky to have uh, my wife was very supportive, and uh, she knew that I probably wasn't as happy as I, I would be, and um, and she sort of said, "If you're not happy, you can always look at somewhere else." And, and that's where I did sort of had a look around and um, going to going to Canterbury because I knew Scott had been there before and he really enjoyed it and stuff. So I knew that it would be going to a, a great environment and um, and it was all about winning stuff as well and just trying to trying to play the whole season. That was my biggest goal anyway. Just have 14 games week in week out under your belt and just to sort of prove to yourself like you can do it. Well, you had another another setback there where um, Rito came through in the ranks and, and um, another step, uh, you know, it's like you almost groomed him. But um, you, you did make the leap to England and that's where it, things really got interesting for you. You found out that uh, you, you qualified for England straight away through through the birth of your grandmother and, and, qualified and got a free trip home. So tell me, uh, the highest level of them all, um, making Test Rugby, how, how was that, mate? Yeah, well that, yeah, it was it was it was that ultimate goal that you set yourself, and then when you achieve it, you want more and more. But yeah, to sort of go over to England and uh, say sort of like yeah, I wanted to play for England. Um, I don't think everyone was happy about it, but that that was my goal going over there and going to Leicester Tigers at the time. They were Premiership champions, so when you go to a, a Championship club like that, you give yourself a great opportunity and. Um, yeah, I went there and I was, I was probably lucky enough that the number eight, the incumbent number eight, got injured and he was out for eight, eight nine months. And I sort of the like, okay, and because I knew I couldn't go away or anything, so I sort of got settled in and played week in, week out and uh, really, really enjoyed it. And then, yeah, get the phone call from uh, Martin Johnson saying, oh, you know, you might, we're considering you for the World Cup training squad in 2011 and, and then go down to the camp and stuff like that. That was, uh, that was amazing. It, and it's a whole new step, a new level to step up to, and it was a great challenge. And then, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a, probably a dream come true, and I really enjoyed that that part of my career. 
Awesome. Well, you had you did have a stellar uh, eight or nine years in in England. You uh, finally got to win a, pre- a premiership uh, final um, with uh, with uh, the Chiefs. Uh, how was that to finally get a, a gold medal in your career, mate? No, that was the second one. Oh, the second I got, one. I got one. I got one of the Tigers, but it probably wasn't as special as the Chiefs one. Uh, the Chief, the Chiefs one was was probably the, the most special one because when I signed with them, they was they finished eighth, and then the next the year I signed, we finished fourth, and um, you can see us getting better and better. And the team environment down there was probably one of the best I've ever been a part of. And even the coaches, the the great people managers, and that's probably what you want as a rugby player. Like coaches understand you and um, respect you, and if you work hard, they look after you. And that's what the Chiefs was all about. And then to go down to go to Twickenham and have my wife and two kids and my mum and dad there um, on that day and then to go over time and beat Jimmy Goffith, um which which I really enjoyed because he, <laughs> he, he there's one there's a one all because he knocked us out of the European Cup with the last uh, conversion it must have been the year before so to get that one over him um, was special but um, yeah that was they were always uh, hold a special spot uh, with me. That uh, Chiefs winning team there because it was it was just a lot of hard hard work. Awesome. Hey mate, after 18 years of being a professional rugby player, um, how how do you want to be remembered, mate? And what do you take away from the game? I don't know, probably hopefully it's not first impressions count because we always sort of looked a little bit better than normal for a rugby player. But um, yeah, you don't judge a book by its cover, sort of thing. Um, I worked hard behind the scenes as well, um, not just what you saw on TV and um, stuff like that. But I just want people to, to enjoy the way I played rugby, really. Yeah, it's, it's what people take away, but at the end of the day, it's what I was happy with and, and be proud of. So, Well, thank you so much for your time today, Thomas. I've always been proud of you. Go well, enjoy retirement, look after yourself. Yes, mate. Thank you, Damien.